yes, my name is Emil. I'm a data scientist at the Ripe NCC, and uh, we looked into uh, this outage. Um, and on one hand, uh, when such an outage happens, it actually makes me feel pretty bad uh, because you know that's like uh, maybe 20 kilometers from, from where I'm, where, where I sit. There's a team in in uh, calls just like Stavros described, and I, I want to also add uh, to the um, uh, to the people who who, who commended uh, Stavros and Amzix for uh, being so open about this. Um, and as a researcher, I feel a bit like a vulture um, looking at um, uh, such events, but because they're they're so rare, um, um, they are also really interesting because uh, something like this doesn't happen uh, very often, and it helps us shed some light on the on the question uh, of um, does the internet route around damage. Um, um, and but we did a couple of earlier case studies uh, around uh, the, the the very large uh, IXs, uh, Amzix in, in 2015, DKIX in uh, 2018, Lynx in 2021. And I was actually two weeks ago. I was half jokingly saying to my to my colleague Kasim, uh, "We're up for a large one in 2024." Um, and unfortunately, it happened a little bit earlier. Um, uh, but um, yeah, what we can actually do with uh, systems like Ripe Atlas is um, see what an uh, event like that looks like from the outside. And uh, I'd like to compare that a little bit to like uh, other fields of, uh, of, of research, chemistry and, 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 and uh, physics, where they just shoot lasers through things they want to look at. And um, well, we don't have laser beams. Well, uh, uh, we have lasers through fiber. Uh, but if you compare that to what we can do with Atlas, you could see Atlas as uh, the Atlas probes as sources of, of lasers and where you point them are the destinations and the, the beams themselves are trace routes. And if you just make them go through uh, your, your infrastructure, uh, and in this case it was M6, but it could be also a large network or uh, another IX, um, uh, you can actually see how that behaves. So if we calibrate uh, Ripe Atlas and only uh, take source destination pairs that reliably go through an IX and that reach a destination, so you have like end-to-end -end connectivity, and we, we basically take that for a single day and we apply that to, to AMZIX, we see in the order of uh, 66,000 pairs of uh, source destination pairs. It's around 7,000 probes. Uh, 1100 destinations and what you then see uh, if you then just look at these uh, these pairs of source destinations over time uh, around when an event happened um, this this is what you can see and I'll, I'll explain the picture um, what we see here is in uh, dark blue there are the source destination pairs that uh, have end-to-end Reach, uh, uh, reachability, so uh, we get um, responses uh, in trace routes from the destinations, and we we see the infrastructure that we studied, or in this case, AMZIX. So as you can see, before the event, that was on uh, everything was basically um, uh, following this pattern, and then when the event happened, uh, yes, there's uh, the, where the first one we actually see a drop, and we don't see. Uh, or roughly half of the source destination pairs saw uh, AMZIX and the other half still had end-to-end -end connectivity. So uh, in as far as we can see, uh, there was routing around damage. Um, if there was a failure um, in end-to-end, -end, you would have more red there. At the, at the top of this graph, we actually see the um, uh, a little bit of red, which 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 indicates that we didn't have end-to-end -end connectivity anymore. And you can actually see that the the two uh, uh, distinct events that uh, Stavros described, and you can see a slow shift back. And that shift back, um, um, well, it's pro uh, either a com uh, probably a combination of people manually 
configuring, reconfiguring, uh, as well as the BGP selection process, where at the, at the somewhere low down in the selection process, you have oldest route wins over newest route. And after an outage, your the new route via an exchange is typically not the oldest. So we can also look at the alternatives uh, that we see. Um, so the picture here on the right shows uh, it's the same uh, analysis methodology, um, but we then look at did we see other IXPs in the path? And we roughly see an even split if, if you uh, between the path without IXP, that's the, the, the green line here in the middle. So that's transit or lateral, lateral peering. Uh, uh, we cannot really say from this. Um, and we see, uh, I, I plotted the three major IXPs. We, we saw a, a, a little bit of uh, other IXPs, um, but what you see here is uh, Analyx, D6, and uh, Lynx taking over. And these, I would say, these are the expected alternatives uh, given the sizes and the localities of these, uh, these IXPs. Um, an interesting difference between the first and the second event is the huge uptick in uh, NLIX uh, here. Um, we can speculate that this was a manual reconfigs, uh, people setting uh, the preferences differently after the second time something happened. Um, okay, so if we look back at the other events that I, uh, I mentioned, um, you, you can basically see uh, mostly the internet routes around damage. It's the same same colors. We see a little bit more red here uh, than in the, the, the latest the, the event last week at Amzix. Um, and I, I, I don't know why that is. It's probably too, uh, uh, there's too little points in this study and it's probably a, a function of where we have Atlas probes uh, and, and uh, uh, who we are measuring. Um, and uh, okay, I, I have to give credits to uh, Malte Tashiro at IIJ for recreating uh, these uh, independently. Um, and and oh, another interesting one here is the, the the differences in how fast things return to initial state. And again, this is like four case studies, so I don't think you can draw any conclusions uh, on that. Uh, but I find the, the differences interesting. Um, and a, 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 a bigger question, I think, is uh, can we do this around other IXPs? Because we see there is resilience around these very large IXPs. Um, can we also see resilience um, around uh, uh, other situations? Uh, hopefully, these situations don't happen, uh, but when they happen, can you see the resilience? And this is a uh, prototype that we developed, uh, developed together with my colleague, Augustine, uh, where we look at how uh, close or how many, how much diversity around IXPs do we have uh, with RIPE Atlas. So if you, if you just uh, look at that from the, in, in terms of the number of ASs with probes within two milliseconds, you can actually see um, that we cover the bigger IXs uh, quite well. So I'm, I'm fairly confident with sort of like, uh, um, how, how diverse the set is, uh, but if you there's a lot of IXs uh, uh, worldwide. Like I think for this, we took peering DB in a 648 lands uh, in there. Um, um, so th there's some work to be done if you also want to measure more IXPs here. So uh, takeaways. Uh, well, the first one, as already mentioned, shit happens. Uh, this is all human made, uh, and, it, and and as Robbie said, it's not if it's when. Uh, and in cases where we see outages at these large IXPs, we see the internet routes around damage. Uh, we might need more I, uh, atlas around IXPs, smaller IXPs, uh, to see similar things uh, in their local context. 
Um, and uh, this is a measurement study. It's not an answer study. We don't know why this is. I, I, I have a guess that it's like a rich local peering ecosystem around these large IXPs. Um, but it's an open question if it's the same for other locations. 